In my opinion, Ash got cheated on in the Sinnoh Pokemon League. I mean, this guy was using a freaking Dark Ryan Latios. Of course he went on to become the Sinnoh League champion. That's why today I'm going to get revenge for Ash and see if I can beat a Hardcore Nuzlocke in Pokemon Brilliant Diamond using only Pokemon Ash has used. Hardcore Nuzlocke rules will be on the left and I'll explain the encounters as we go. At the very beginning of the game, I already have a tough decision to make. Since Ash used both a Turtwig and Chimchar, I can choose either of them, but I can only end up using using one. Infernape is by far the better Nuzlocke Pokemon, but do I really want half of this playthrough to be the monkey show? Nah, that's why I went with Turtwig to make things more interesting. I named Turtwig after Brock. On Route 201, I already get to catch my next encounter being a Starly. I name her Cynthia because Staraptor is an S tier Pokemon. Now come on, do I really need to go to trainer school? Actually, I have been feeling kind of dumber since playing as Ash. Oh, finally some breakfast. That's not right. And of course, I needed to name my rival after Gary. This Gary is nothing like the anime though and gets swept by wing attacks from Cynthia. Along the way to Orber City, Cynthia evolves into a Staravia. And with that evolution comes an awesome new ability, Intimidate, which is perfect for our match versus Rourke, weakening Geodude's attack. This allows Brock to switch in safely and set up a growth while Geodude uses Rollout. I didn't need the extra power to take out Geodude or Onix with Razor Leaves, but it was more needed to ensure the one-hit KO against Kranidos winning us the first gym badge. This girl is totally giving me a sign that she's now available, but since I'm playing as Ash, it flies right over my head and I move on. Then I head over to Valley Windworks to find and catch a Weasel, to which I name James. As I break into where Team Galactic is hiding, one of the grunts stops me and is like, yo, have you played this awesome space game? From this video sponsor, Star Trek Fleet Command. You heard that right, I have an actual Star Trek sponsor, which is really cool because it's a franchise I've known my entire life. It's a free-to-play mobile, open-world, strategic MMO available on iOS and Android. Like the Pokemon games, you can really experience the nostalgia this game has to offer. For example, you can unlock iconic characters like Chris Pine's Kirk, Zachary Quinto's Spock, and Patrick Stewart's Picard. Just make sure to reach level 5 by February 10th, 2022 to unlock the character Michael Burnham. If you get to level 10 by February 10th, you'll upgrade the officer to rank 2. Have fun deploying teams on missions, experiencing a story within the multiverse, creating alliances, choosing a faction, whether you want to be a hero or or a villain, crafting the perfect ship, or just using the Enterprise, build bases, and much more. Remember, Star Trek Fleet Command is free to play on iOS and Android, so don't forget to use my link in the description below to download. Thank you, Star Trek Fleet Command, for sponsoring this video. Now let's warp speed over to Mars. Zubat goes first with Supersonic, confusing Brock. What else is new with this guy? Well, it turns out Brock contributed nothing to this battle because I switched in Cynthia to intimidate, then taking the fake out. We then exchange a few scratches and plucks back and forth. I noticed Perugly is faster, and that Cynthia is in lethal range to dying from a critical hit. So I quick attack the next turn to faint the cat first. Zubat is back, but only does minimal damage with U-turn, so Cynthia wins that duel as well. Shortly after an Eterna Forest, Brock evolves into a Grottle. Gardenia will be the easiest gym leader of this whole run. I just lead Cynthia and pluck, 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 pluck. Jupiter, on the other hand, can be quite a problem. Her skun tank has Flamethrower, which can incinerate Brock. Cynthia has a minus special defense nature, and James can't really do much right now. I made sure to have Cynthia hold a Petra Berry in case Skun Tank uses Poison Gas. The Zubat frightens me a little with Poison Fang because I don't want a berry to be wasted against Zubat. But things turn out just fine. However, with Skunk Tank, you can see that only three flamethrowers are needed to kill Cynthia. Thankfully, she goes for poison gas the next turn, which Cynthia just heals herself by eating the held berry. But then I have an ash moment. Oh goodness. Okay. Yeah, see, we actually would have okay. Oh no! Oh my gosh. Oh. I totally forgot about that. I totally... Yeah, I forgot to consider Aftermath, but I got super lucky. No one died. Since I do have the ability to cut trees, I make my way back to Old Chateau to find myself a Ghastly. Uh, Mr. YouTuber, Ash never had a Ghastly. Time for me to clarify my rules regarding encounters. I'm allowing myself to catch the pre-evolutions of Ash's Pokemon. For instance, Ash had a Haunter and a Gengar, so I can catch a Ghastly, which will evolve into them. However, I cannot evolve Pokemon past the stage where Ash didn't evolve the Pokemon. For example, Ash did not evolve his Buizel because he's a dweeb. Therefore, I cannot evolve my own Buizel. Speaking of which, on Route 209, I find a Mime Jr., which will become a Mr. Mime just like the one Ash used. I name him my new dad. He told me you killed him. No, I died. 
am your father. No! I've been using Cynthia the most since she's the safest Pokemon to use during our travels. This has caused her to level up fast and I don't want her to go over the level cap, which is the level of the next gym leader's ace Pokemon until the start of that battle. So I box her for now and have the worst Ash moment. Maya seems like the easier one, so we'll face Maya first. Oh, that's not Moo. That's Zoo. That is not Maya. Oh, crap. That's not Maya. Oh, shoot. <sighs> don't like that. Don't like that. Oh, burned. No. Oh. Okay. Flinch, flinch, flinch. Nope. <gasps> oh, no. Nope, that's death. Well, since this is a Nuzlocke, when a Pokemon of mine faints, I cannot use it anymore, and since I wide it out, I have to erase my save file and start over. So on to attempt two. Cynthia handled Jupiter with a lot less stress this time, and already back to the rainy route. You want me? Uh, I think the freak not. By the way, you can pause here to see the new natures of each Pokemon for those interested. Luckily, after you reach Solaceon Town, you can go back to Hearthome City and the south entrance is now open, so I go that way instead. Which is great because I can finally get Ash's real starter Pokemon at the Trophy Garden. Well, almost. It's a Pichu, but I do name her Pikachu, though. Next, I go underground to find another encounter. I find a Munchlax, which is great because those things are near impossible to find from the sweet honey trees. However, the Nuzlocke rules state that I can only get the first Pokemon I encounter from each area, which means Gligar is no longer an option since it can only be found underground. But I think Snorlax will overall be better. I name him Professor Oak. Soon after, Ash's dad evolves into a Haunter, which is great because I can now do a trade back with one of my awesome viewers to evolve him into a Gengar. And that's just what I needed when facing the gym leader, Maylene. Ash's dad immediately scares off Meditite, swapping in Machoke in their place. Needless to say, that thing is not surviving a psychic attack. Meditite comes back to be Oko'd by a Hex. Now Lucario knows he's also doomed, so he just flexes with bulk up. I can't believe Ash Ash's dad was finally there for him. Shortly after getting the third badge, Pikachu evolves into Pikachu. And we're gonna make this Pikachu busted, just like the anime. Earlier on, Cynthia used Thief to steal a light ball from a wild Pikachu. When held, light balls doubled Pikachu's attack and special attack. So she's perfect for Crash or Wake. Only problem is Wake's float soul. That thing is so dang fast. Thus, I have Pikachu use one agility to double her speed. Gyarados bites hard with Crunch, but now it's GG's for his water types. Thunderbolt the Gyarados, Grass Knot the Quagsire, and outspeed the float soul. Aqua Jet. <gasps> I forgot about Aqua Jet, everyone. I forgot about Aqua Jet. Uh, I was so concerned about speed that I tunnel visioned myself, totally forgetting to check the weasel's moves. Turns out, Aqua Jet being a priority move led to Pikachu dying, Ash's main Pokemon. With my head hanging low, my other Pokemon step up to the plate and say, Andrew, let's do this. For her. Don't flinch. Don't you dare flinch. plan is working yes panic panic I forgot to tell everyone to press panic I can't believe <laughs> ice fink panic panic this is, this is exactly why I brought James. I brought James specifically to get hit by the water attacks, and it's been working swell. Why is he going for Ice Fang? Don't get a crit. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Dude, I need you to hit. I need you to hit. Come on, buddy, buddy. I need you to hit. Come on. Buddy. Where's your quick claw? I gave you that thing. There we go. There we go. Oh my gosh. 
it was finally over. Not gonna lie, I feel bad for not evolving James since he was such a key part for making sure no one else died. But rules are rules. I get a breather with the next rival battle. Cynthia took care of his whole team. Two major upgrades happen as a result. Professor Oak evolves into Snorlax, and Brock evolves into Torterra. After defeating some trainers in the pea soup fog, Cynthia reaches her final form, becoming a Star Raptor. Fantina allows you to battle her per Cyrus's approval. Ash's dad fits in with her ghost types, immediately plowing through Driftblim with a Shadow Ball. Now, Fantina. Tina's Gengar may seem scary, but I have nothing to fear since her only ghost attack is Shadow Claw. That paired with an awful attack stat comforts Ash's dad while he bowls over the opposing Gengar with a Shadow Ball. Dad is injured enough where he'll have to swap out for Professor Oak, who is immune to the Phantom Force, then Oak coasts the Miss Magius with a single crunch, winning us the fifth gym badge. Another rival battle? Cynthia, please handle this. Yo, Riley, what's up? I'll make you a deal, bro. I'll get you out of this cave, and in return, you get new dad to learn Mimic within the next few battles. Sure enough, he does, then evolves into a Mr. Mime. I'll take that egg, too. According to science, riding back and forth on a bicycle hatches eggs. Science is so amazing! Riolu joins the team and is named Paul. After some more friendship grinding, Paul evolves into a Lucario. Going around to check on the honey trees is a pain. I hardly ever find an ash encounter, but this tree had an ape on. That kind of sucks, though. I was hoping for a hair cross. I named the monkey Misty and box her since I can't evolve her. No thanks to Ash. Anyways, let's go challenge another gym. It's Byron's Bronzor vs. Brock. I start things off with Stealth Rocks while they use Trick Room, making slower mons faster for the next few turns. Upon switching in Professor Oak, Bronzor confuses us, but Oak is able to heal himself with a held person berry. Bronzor is inspired from the recent Dune film. Getting sand everywhere while Oak crunches. Bronzor goes for another confused ray, but thankfully Oak mentally gets through it and crunches again, eliminating the Bronzor. Brock tags in for Oak's spot on the playing field, taking in the Earthquake relatively well. I have him Swords Dance for an attack boost, then Steelix goes for a Gyro Ball. It doesn't do enough, so Brock begins his rampage, Earthquaking Byron's remaining Mons. They didn't stand a chance because of the Stealth Rocks placed at the beginning of the battle, effectively negating their sturdy abilities. Sixth gym badge is ours. There's a Magic Carp behind this rock. So you know what Ash does? He flexes next to it. Like, why? And then he eats it? I express my compliments to the chef, Saturn, through a Pokemon battle. Ash's dad Okos his entire team with Shadow Balls and a Psychic. You ate Magikarp? Let's battle for the next meal. Paul gets a chance to shine here. He Swords Dances first since Golbat's Bites do so little damage. A couple Metal Claws later, wipe out that bat. Perugly comes in to weaken our boosted power with Growl, but it's not enough to save her from a Drain Punch. Bronzor tries to stop us with the Confuse Ray, but Paul pulls through with more Drain Punches, winning the game. It's time to get revenge against the seventh Gym Leader. Her name has caused so many to fall for the D's Nuts jokes. So I'm gonna have Cynthia, the Star Raptor, one-shot everyone on her team with a close combat or pluck. <laughs> Thanks for watching out for us little guys, Ash. Cynthia keeps going, though. Against Cyrus's Murkrow, a couple plucks do the job, and a close combat obliterates his Sneasel. His Golbat then goes for a Screech right when I switch to Lucario. That's a free switch, since Golbat's only physical move is Poison Fang, which doesn't affect Steel types. So we trade Metal Claws and Air Cutters back and forth, eventually coming out on top. Why would he let a kid like you come and go freely? Just shut up and give me the legendaries. Now, when I get to Spear Pillar to stop Team Galactic, I decide to pull up the anime to see how Ash stopped to them. Quick, Pikachu, use Thunderbolt, and Piplup, use Bubble Beam! Well, it looks like they just went ham, which I'm not going to be able to do. But I did notice something. I think the Gen 4 legendaries may be related to a certain Star Wars creature. Anyways, my rival and I team up to get past Cyrus's goons. By the way, I swear, every freaking Team Galactic member has a Bronzor. Do they have a warehouse just full of these things? Whatever. The key to winning this is patience. I aim for Mars's Bronzor first because I don't want Jupiter's Gun Tank to Flamethrower Brock. They put up a Reflect and use Payback. The next turn, Mars's Steel Plate goes down. She sends out Perugly next, who isn't hurt by Earthquake much because of the screens. Thankfully, the Cat Body Slams the Munchlax, knocking it out, but I get the great partner Star Raptor now, which is so worth it. I go Earth quake again, but the cat dodges it by U-turning the Golbat in her place. I guess my rival wants this battle to go on forever using Double Team. Brock dodges the U-turn, then crunches back. Unfortunately, we get confused. Staraptor plucks Golbat, who then pieces out with a U-turn. Then Brock heals with Synthesis. Perugly body slam Staraptor, also getting the paralysis, and then I went for crunch this time, just in case they would do a U-turn again. Staraptor passes out from hitting itself in confusion, which brings out Infernape next. Awesome teammate, since he just immediately knocks out the cat with close combat, while I crunch the bronze 
on Zora to zero HP. Double Golbat is exactly what I wanted to see because of no flamethrower. Infernape Flame Wheels, a Golbat Poison Fangs, Brock Crunches, and the other Golbat uses Air Cutter. Back to Infernape getting a KO on one of the Golbats, and so does Brock. That just leaves Jupiter's Skunk Tank all alone. I shift in Professor Oak while my monkey partner close combats them. The poison gas from them does not work since Oak's ability immunity prevents him from ever being poisoned. The last close combat makes it GG's for Jupiter and Mars, winning the doubles battle with no deaths on my team. Hello there. General Kenobi. So just like General Kenobi, we go straight into the boss battle as well. However, I forgot that, which means Brock leads us into this battle against the Haunch Crow, which has the moves Air Cutter and Night Slash, also with the held item, Scope Lens, and the Super Luck ability, which means those two attacks will always crit. So of course, I have to replace Brock with my new dad. Through the power of love, he dodges the incoming Air Slash twice. Ah, uh, what a sweet father-son moment. And then there's the crit from us. This battle is no longer a worry with Cyrus throwing in Crobat next. I bring out my old dad while they tailwind. The critical hit air cutter doesn't even take 50% of our HP and our Thunderbolt came close to one-shotting. A dodge from us next turn and another Thunderbolt zaps the bat away. Gyarados is next and since they still have tailwind doubling their speed, I swap dad for Cynthia intimidating the Gyarados attack and flying above the earthquake. I pluck away the held Wakan berry and am then hit by an Ice Fang. We're in critical hit range to death now, so I have Cynthia U-turn out of here to bring back in Ash's dad. The Ice Fang brings dad below 50% HP so he eats his citrus berry and since both their tail when Anne Wakanberry are now gone, Ash's dad goes first, obliterating Gyarados with Thunderbolt. Weavile is revealed as Cyrus's ace, so I switch for Paul, but since they use Dig, I switch again for Cynthia. The aerial ace, but I hit them hard with a quad super effective close combat, saving the world. People say they wish they could see Ash's dad in the anime. However, in this case, I'm glad he's a ghost, since that makes the Dialga encounter automatically easier, since we can just auto run from the battle without risking any lives. Ah, Sunny Shore City. Volkaner is like the guy working at the store by himself, but is never at the cashier station. Come on, bud. Back to the gym. We all gotta work for a living. Wait, what can you see in these binoculars? <laughs> oh, that's hot. That's hot. All right, time to defeat all of the required gym trainers. Should be a breeze, right? <gasps> I forgot about reversal. Yep, totally went into autopilot mode and forgot to check out this guy's moveset. Well, who am I supposed to replace Brock with? I caught a gibble back at Wayward Cave while retrieving the Earthquake TM. The problem is, I'm not allowed to evolve Apom, Weasel, and Gibble. Come on, Ash, why'd you have to do this to me? At least for now, I shouldn't need any of them, so let's challenge Volkner. I send out Professor Oak first, since his high special defense can withstand Raichu's immediate Volt Switch. Then the high horsepower does quite a bit of damage to the Apom. I predict he's gonna go for a fake out, so I switch in Ash's dad, who is isn't affected by it. A dark pulse gets rid of the monkey. Back to Oak, while Raichu Volt switches for Octillery. I have the leftovers item to heal each turn, so I protect first. The octopus then goes for Aurora Beam, and Oak slams it with his body, also paralyzing them, which means Oak can go first the next turn, body slamming again, fainting Octillery without receiving any additional damage. Once again, Raichu makes a brief appearance before Volt switching on out to Luxray, who dodges my high horsepower. Oak's physical defense is not as great, so I pivot in Cynthia for the Intimidate, and then she also dodges the Iron tail. Cynthia then shows off her own switch out move, U-turn, to bring Paul into action resisting the Thunderfang. Earthquake easily takes down Luxray from here and I'm not gonna risk anything with Raichu when I know Professor Oak can soak in all of its moves. One body slam from him squashes the Raichu into a pancake, winning us the final gym badge. Since the level cap jumps up so high from this point, Victory Road and the last rival fight are a breeze, but I'll keep the last rival battle playing in the background as I explain the training I did to prepare for the Elite Four. The other Pokemon I could have caught were Heracross and Knockdown. I didn't see a need for another flying type, and I didn't want to pause this challenge for too long just waiting for a Heracross to appear. So Missy the Apom will be my sixth team member. Now, since all of these Pokemon have already been gaining Eevees from battles throughout the whole story, I decided to optimize what stats I could, even if I couldn't max them out. With Misty, I was able to train her special defense to the max and get a sizable amount of HP in there. All of my new dad's remaining Eevees went into special attack, but it didn't get full though. I was almost able to tap out dad's remaining speed, but we did get enough for one instant 
distance that I'll need him to outspeed. It may seem weird that I trained a jolly natured Lucario to be a special attacker, but I'll explain that later. With all that said, let's begin the Elite Four challenge. Brock dying may have been the best thing for me. It opened my eyes with what Misty can do. You see, the hardest part about the Elite Four in this game is that the developers made their Pokemon really dang fast. So Misty increases her speed and special attack with agility and nasty plot. You can see from that Bug Buzz attack how much the EV training is really kicking in. Misty Baton passes the boosted stats over to my new dad. He gets poison from Toxic, but heals from the held Petra Berry. This is an auto win here. Toxic can't go through Substitute, and Dustox's only attacking move is Bug Buzz, which can't hurt us since we have the soundproof ability. Ash's new dad sweeps Aaron's entire team with Psychic, save for Drapion, who falls to a dazzling gleam. Before heading into the next room, I teach Mr. Mime Energy Ball and Grass Knot. This will give us the advantage versus Bertha's ground types. So a small person's brain, like Ash's, would immediately go for the kill here. And while I know that's tempting to do, we have to hope for Toxic. I need Toxic. Please, Toxic me, please. Please. No! Oh, the plan is ruined. The plan is ruined. The reason why I need Toxic is Golem has Sturdy. I can't kill Golem in one hit, and Col Golem can kill us in one hit. Now he goes for Toxic. What? Please go for Toxic. I need you to hit with Toxic. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, we can win. All right. We can win without dying. Okay. Good, good, good. Okay. Yeah, that's why I needed sub. Because Golem's not going down one hit and Golem can one-shot us. That's that's why the sub is so important. Okay. That's fine. Oh. Oh, no. This isn't good. This guy kind of ruins my plans. Oh, this is bad. I did not want to see this guy next. I needed to see this guy last. Okay, energy ball here. Ah! It's a high roll. I, I I know it didn't it didn't I knew it did not kill without a crit. I knew that. But I was just I wasn't expecting to see Whisk Cash already. Don't break the sub. Please don't break the sub. Please don't break the sub. That's so bad. I could have got a sub up. I messed up. Oh, I messed up. I messed up bad. I should have thought of that. I messed up bad. Oh no. Okay, wait, wait. I could have got a sub up. We would have won. Wait, wait. We could still win. Pseudo Wudo, that's good. That's good. I I'll take Pseudo Wudo any day. That's great. That's great. Okay. Oh, if you could send the hippo out next. I, I know you won't send the hippo out next, but if you could send the hippo out next, that'd be the best case scenario. Gosh dang it. It's Golem. This is the guy I need the sub for. Oh, what do I do here? Oh, I need Mr. Mime. I need everyone for Cynthia. Just hopefully no crits. Heavy slam, there it is. I'm fine with that. We we have to do this. We have to do this. Okay. U turn. Don't you dare rock polish or heavy slam. Come on, please don't, buddy. Please don't. Stone edge. Okay, we should be fine. No crit. Oh, thank goodness. No crit. Crit would have killed us. Oh my god. We win. Okay. Oh my gosh. We win. Okay. Oh my gosh. I'm shaking. Okay. Let's see. Okay. We just energy ball here. Get out of here, dude. Oh, freaking A. That was so dang close. Okay. Um, then we grass not and win here. Right? Yeah. That's death. Stupid, stupid. Okay. This is really bad. I don't know how we're going to beat Cynthia. Oh my gosh. I can't believe I just lost Mr. Mime. Everything. Uh, I wasn't even worried about Hippaladon. It was such a... I did the calc and it's such a high percent chance to kill. And it didn't happen. Okay, so we always Brave Bird here. Okay. Ding. Freaking good. Oh wow, crit. Way to go, buddy. I think that just won us the game. Can't believe I lost Mime. Oh, guys, I don't know how we're going to beat Cynthia. 
Yup, that sucks. My plan to beat Cynthia included Ash's new dad, Mr. Mime. But we'll worry about that later. For Flint, it's Gengar time. He's holding the choice specs, which boosts his special attack by 50%. That along with the speed EV training I did earlier, allow him to outspeed Rapidash and Oko them before they even get a chance to use Hypnosis. Ash's dad also one-shots the Steelix. I get a free switch versus Low Punny since they went for a mirror coat. I protect with Cynthia, causing the bunny to crash from a high jump kick, doing massive damage to itself. The next turn, I bring back Ash's dad, which makes Low Punny next high jump kick go right through him and crash land. Ash's dad is now back in control of this match, Okoing the Drifblim with a Shadow Ball. Even though we were faster than Rapidash, Flint's Infernape still outspeeds us. The Fire Punch does decent damage, but the worst part is my Shadow Ball doesn't even get the monkey down to 1 HP, which means he still has his focus, Ash. I swap Pokemon here to keep dad alive and for Cynthia to weaken them with Intimidate while they heal with a full restore. I bait the Thunder Punch into Professor Oak, then switch again to bait the close combat into Cynthia. After two Intimidates, I think Cynthia is okay to take in another hit, then you turn the Infernape, effectively breaking the focus Sash. But can Ash's dad live to tell the tale? Don't crit me, don't crit me, don't crit me. Oh my gosh, no crit, okay. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. With Flint defeated, it's on to the last Elite Four member, Lucian. Here's where I can explain why I made Paul a special attacker, even though he's jolly natured. Lucario in this game does not have crunch, and I need a dark move on him. To compensate for the minus special attack nature, I nasty plot. I don't need all three, but I do need to saw out Mr. Mime's light screen turns. Once enough time has gone by, Flash Cannon wipes out Mr. Mime. Same goes for Medicham. Alakazam uses Future Sight rather than Psychic, so a Dark Pulse from us shatters the Magician. Same thing goes for Giraffe Rig. And need I say more for Bronzong? It's now time for the final battle of this run. Will Ash again go home a loser, or will he be crowned the Sinnoh Champion? Remember, speed is the issue here. After Misty uses agility twice and survives two Dark Pulses, Sheepatom passes the triple speed over to Professor Oak, the only Pokemon we haven't used during the Elite Four yet. He takes in the Dark Pulse just fine. Now, Spiritomb is going to attempt Sucker Punches the next five turns because they know Snorlax can't take a physical hit well. So I take advantage of this and use Belly Drum, a move that removes half of Oak's HP, but in return, he gets his attack stat increased by six stages to the max. He then eats his Citrus Berry, and I press Recycle until Spiritomb is out of Sucker Punches. A single high horsepower removes Spiritomb from the field. Of course, during the Cynthia battle, I want to say the battle was intense, but with Oak's new speed and power, all that's left is to see Professor Oak one-hit KO each of Cynthia's Pokemon with Body Slams. Yes, even the Garchomp. So we did it! We helped Ash become the Sinnoh Champion after he got ripped off in the anime. It kind of feels wrong that we did this without Pikachu, but I see their death as what motivated me to win this. If you want to see more character-themed runs like this, give the video a like and subscribe. I'm hoping to release more champion-based runs and would love for you to come along on my journey. If you ever want to see any of my future runs live, go check out my YouTube livestream channel. Link in the description below. You all have a good one. Thanks!